What market conditions were needed for Boeing to design and produce the 777? And what role has the aircraft taken in the Boeing lineup? Let's explore. In the 1990s, Boeing was in a unique place. Its line of smaller aircraft, such as the Boeing 737, had slowly been getting bigger, leading to the design of the Boeing 767. Additionally, its successful wide-body Boeing 747 had been popular for its ability to transport many passengers long distances, although it did have one or two flaws, which we'll get to in a minute. In the 1980s, the FAA ruled that some twinjet aircraft could be rated to fly up to three hours without having an airport nearby a set of rules known as ETOPS. Airlines no longer needed to use a four-engine jetliner to fly between Europe and the United States, and thus could use a more fuel-efficient Boeing 767 or Airbus A300. However, these planes didn't carry as many passengers as the Boeing 747. While airlines saved on fuel consumption, they also realized that they were making less money with fewer seats. These limitations created the demand for a new aircraft, one with the fuel savings of a twin jet but having the capacity to carry as many passengers as a 747. Boeing decided to meet with eight different airlines to see what they needed and if there was a gap in its offering. They met with the following carriers. All Nippon Airways, American Airlines, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Delta Airlines, Japan Airlines, United Airlines and Qantas, who would never order the Boeing 777. Airlines pointed out the gap between the Boeing 747 and the 767 and that a new jet could even fit both markets. Besides, around the late 80s, many rival DC-10 and L-1011 aircraft were approaching retirement and there was yet to be an improved replacement type available. But surprisingly, the Boeing 777 was not the first answer to this market gap. Boeing came to the table with a Boeing 767X a sort of double-deck monstrosity that had the paper benefits of a twin engine with improved passenger capacity. This design would mean that the Boeing 767 production line would remain. Furthermore, there would be cost savings with Boeing using the same cockpit, engines and more. The 767X design was not popular with airlines who wanted the ability to entirely modify the interior and wanted a design that was cheaper to operate. Boeing conceded and decided that they would need to come up with a completely clean sheet design, one that incorporated airlines' input and met their particular requirements. The 777 would be the first aircraft wholly designed on a computer. It would be bigger than all other twinjet or trijet airplanes flying at the time, but smaller than the 747. Boeing would also bring to the table improvements in airfoil technology, flight deck design, passenger comfort and interior flexibility as mentioned by Boeing on its website. In the end, the aircraft would go on to be incredibly popular, becoming a cornerstone product of the Boeing commercial aircraft line. Boeing is soon to deliver the latest version of the Boeing 777, the 777X, and by doing so, it will extend the legacy of one of its most popular designs ever. Have you ever flown on a Boeing 777? Did you enjoy the flight? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.